Hey guys, Justice here with TomorrowsFilmmakers.com, the largest online film academy in the world. And today we're gonna be showing you exactly how to take your iPhone and make it look like a $30,000 RED camera. Now, let me first start out by saying that most people doing videos like this would show you only iPhone footage and then try to trick you guys into thinking it's a RED camera or something like that to prove their point. But the montage that we showed you at the beginning wasn't just shot with an iPhone and wasn't just shot with a RED camera, but half of the shots were an iPhone 12 and the other half was a $30,000 RED camera. Were you able to tell the difference? And what I love is that it wasn't some really high quality shot followed by a really low quality shot that you were easily be able to see which one was the iPhone but a $30,000 RED camera and a cell phone were placed side by side and seamlessly cut back and forth and you thought nothing of it. So if you take these steps and apply them to your filmmaking, your audience might not be able to tell the difference between a $30,000 cinema camera and a phone that you have in your pocket. But before we jump into those steps, if you would like to learn more about shooting with a smartphone, inside our full academy, we have a 100 plus episode mobile filmmaking cinema course on everything you need to know to get cinematic footage with your cell phone. You can learn more about that inside our full course at tomorrowsfilmmakers.com. We have over a thousand training videos and over a hundred hours of content on every single filmmaking subject that you can imagine. With over 10,000 students in over 50 countries, our award-winning film course is your one-stop to learn all the skills that you need to succeed. And the best part is right now we are running an insane deal of only $97. A lifetime membership to our award-winning $800 film course is only 97 bucks. So if you wanna take advantage of this crazy deal, you can check out the website in the link below and head on over to tomorrowsfilmmakers.com to learn more. But today I wanna to show you exactly what you need to do in order to improve the quality of your smartphone footage and not just improve, but turn your smartphone into a cinema camera. Now, this is going to sound weird to say, but I personally hate videos like this and I will tell you why. And it's because most people that make videos about a cell phone versus a RED camera try to convince you that your cell phone is just as good as a cinema camera and that you don't need to buy one. They show this by placing some random footage side by side, and if you can't tell the difference, then the cinema camera is obsolete. The reason this marketing works is because they are only showing the cell phone in the perfect conditions for filming with a cell phone. I mean, there's a reason a RED camera is $30,000, and it's because it works flawlessly in pretty much every element. If the cell phone is not in its perfect element, it starts to look like cell phone footage. And that's one of the main things I wanna share with you guys, how to make sure your cell phone does look as good as a RED camera by knowing the cell phone's advantages and weaknesses. And I'm not here to say that you don't need to buy a RED camera because these two shots just look so similar. I'm here to show you the exact limitations of your cell phone, which involves things to pay attention to and also what situations to avoid to get the best results with your smartphone. So write down these eight steps to turn your smartphone into a cinema camera, starting with step number one, and that is cell phones are terrible in low light. Now I don't wanna start out with something negative, but if you want your cell phone to hold up at all, do not shoot in low light situations. Here are two shots of a person sitting in a chair. One is shot with a RED camera, the other is shot with an iPhone. And you know, they actually look somewhat similar. It's really hard to tell the difference until we have that exact same shot, but it's lit only by a campfire. Now it's no question at all which one is the iPhone, and that's because cell phones are terrible in low light. If your camera has a larger sensor, it's able to capture more detail and do much better in low light. And the RED camera has a 35 millimeter sensor inside it, while an iPhone has a sensor size about the size of your pinky nail, if not smaller. In 2018, Steven Soderbergh released his feature film, Unsane, which not only brought in $15 million at the box office and was actually well received by critics, but it was filmed entirely on an iPhone 7. There's a scene that takes place at night in the film, and if you look at the behind the scenes, they film the entire thing during the day and then color grade it to look like it's at night. Even in Hollywood on big budget films shot on an iPhone, they wouldn't even attempt to film in low light because it just doesn't hold up. So if you watch any iPhone films done by Apple, there are never any shots at night. 
So to increase the quality of your smartphone, avoid low light situations because your smartphone just won't hold up and it will automatically start to look very amateur. Step number two is focal lengths. Now most smartphones today have a few cameras built into them, an ultra wide lens, the standard lens, and then a zoomed in lens. Unfortunately, even though the ultra wide and the telephoto lens might look cool, they both should be avoided. Phone companies prioritize the standard lens that you're gonna be using the most, and that means the highest quality glass and the highest quality lens is going to be that standard lens, which is around 26 millimeters. The telephoto lens and the ultra wide lens does compress the quality a little bit when shooting. And even if it might not be a lot, you do lose some quality with the other lenses. And that's why in all iPhone shorts and films that you see, they use the standard lens for everything. If it's a close up shot, they move the actual phone closer to the subject and avoid the telephoto lens on the phone. Of course, you can buy some third-party lenses, which we'll talk about in a minute, but if you're wanting to get a little bit closer to a subject or maybe you're having an over-the-shoulder conversation, it might be tempting to zoom in and get the correct framing, but that will decrease the quality and it's not recommended. Again, in Hollywood today, they almost never use the telephoto mode, but always move the smartphone closer to the subject. Knowing the limitations of a smartphone will greatly increase the quality. So everyone that tries to zoom in with a phone ends up making the project look much worse. So stick to that standard lens and move the actual phone to get closer to your subject. Step number three is to create depth of field. Now depth of field is how blurry the background is, and this is very easy to get with a DSLR or a cinema camera. You simply point your lens at something and you have depth of field. But it's no secret though that smartphones have little to no depth of field. When taking pictures, they've actually come out with features inside the phone like portrait mode to add a fake depth of field to the background. But unfortunately though, there is no way to add extra depth of field when in video. Now there have been some companies that have tried to come out with actual focusing lenses for phones. And again, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but you never really see professionals using them for the entire project because they do decrease the quality of your image a little bit. And that's why this step isn't titled use depth of field, but to create depth of field. And there are a few ways to create depth of field with your smartphone. And one of those ways is to pull your subject away from the background. This will automatically add depth by pushing the background as far away as possible. Next is to move the phone as close to your subject as you can. If you're close to your subject and the background is far away, you're able to get the background a little bit blurrier. And also to add something in the foreground. If you have something out of focus close to the camera, it's creating depth with a three dimensional element. You have the foreground, the subject, and the background. Even though this was shot with an expensive camera, the cell phone looks better because we have created that depth. Step number four, and is probably the most important step to remember, and that is your dynamic range. Dynamic range is how much detail your camera can see in the shadows and the highlights at the exact same time. This $30,000 RED camera has fantastic dynamic range and can see details in both the shadows and the highlights in the exact same shot. Unfortunately, with cell phones, they don't have good dynamic range and you kind of have to choose which you want to expose for, the shadows or the highlights. With that being said, to have bad dynamic range in your image and to have blown out highlights just screams amateur and cheap camera. And the way to fix that is much easier than you might think simply avoid blown out highlights in areas with a lot of contrast. If you do this, the quality will skyrocket. You see, by understanding the limitations of your phone, you're able to then create higher quality shots by avoiding places that the phone sensor just can't handle. If you're shooting outside, the best time to shoot would be during golden hour. This is the first hour of light when the sun is coming up or the last hour of light when the sun is going down because it gives you even lighting. If you try to film any other time, especially with the sun directly overhead, you're going to run into issues with dynamic range. Avoid shooting towards things like open doors or windows or shooting under trees. Other cameras might be able to handle the light, but your cell phone won't be able to. The reason the opening montage looks so good is because we purposefully shot during golden hour whenever there was even lighting and the iPhone could actually handle it. If we were to shoot the montage with the sun directly overhead, the iPhone footage would be easily noticed because it wouldn't be able to handle the light. So avoid areas that your phone can't handle and have even lighting in your shot. But of course, if you absolutely have to shoot outside in the sun, 
expose for the highlights instead of the shadows. It's better to be a little bit dark than to have overexposed highlights. Once you have those blown out highlights, you've lost all the cinematic quality of your project. So know the limitations of your phone sensor and plan out your shots accordingly. Step number five is smooth movements. Now this step could really be said about any camera and we've talked about this before, but it's especially true with a cell phone. You can very easily go handheld with larger cinema cameras and your footage still looks great. It still might look handheld, but it doesn't look like a street fight video on YouTube, which is exactly what your footage is going to look like if you go handheld with your iPhone. With having such a small form factor, you aren't able to get those small handheld jitters that come with shooting with a cell phone. Putting these two handheld shots side by side really show what we're talking about. One looks handheld, but it's more of a cinematic handheld with very smooth movements. The other handheld has these really small bumps and jitters that no longer look cinematic, but look very amateur and like a home video. There isn't anything you're doing wrong, it's just impossible to get out those small jitters when you're holding a camera that's just so small. Invest in a stabilizer. If you wanted to grab a quick shot where you aren't really moving and maybe you're just pivoting, that might be okay handheld, but if you're moving at all, get a stabilizer. The best stabilizer for cell phones right now is the DJI Osmo 4. Unlike other stabilizers, this one is designed perfectly for your cell phone and has given us no trouble at all. If you try to mount just your cell phone to a larger gimbal, uh, with being so lightweight, it's gonna have a hard time even recognizing that there's a camera attached. Of course, if you invest in some third-party lenses, a larger stabilizer will work just fine. But invest in a stabilizer and don't go handheld. Once you have your stabilizer, do something that most people aren't doing with their smartphone videos, and that is to move the camera. Most people pick up their phones, record something in handheld, and it just looks like a smartphone video. Stand out by not only buying a stabilizer, but moving the camera. Step number six is to use a manual camera app. Now you might be tempted to just click the camera icon, select video, and then click record. But when you look at your footage, you will be disappointed because you were not using your phone to its fullest potential. We highly recommend using a manual camera app to not only have access to more settings, but also to control all your settings manually. For Apple, we recommend the Pro Camera app by Moment and also Filmic Pro. For Android, we also recommend Filmic Pro, but Beast Grip and DJI also have camera apps that you can use, but I would suggest trying out different ones and seeing which one you like the best. Whatever camera app you decide to use, the most important thing is that it gives you full control over your camera settings that the default camera app just doesn't allow you to do. And the main feature that it allows you to do is to lock all of these settings. The default camera is set to auto, which means your focus, exposure, shutter speed, and white balance will all change as you move the camera. We want to use our camera app to lock all of those settings so that they don't change while filming. And this leads right into step number seven, which is your camera settings. Now, if you wanna learn exactly how to run your camera, you can check out our video called Master Your Camera in 20 Minutes. This will give you more information about what each of these settings do. But in the app settings, you wanna first change your shooting quality to 4K to get the highest quality possible. Smartphones also default to shooting in 30 frames per second, but we wanna shoot in 24 frames per second or 60 for slow motion. Then change your bitrate to as high as it will allow you to go. And if your bitrate is set to standard, just go ahead and set that to high or whatever your highest setting is. Next, turn off the internal stabilizer. Now they've started to fix this issue with newer phones, but in older phones, the internal stabilizer just kind of looked like a bad warp stabilizer in After Effects. Also, if you're using a gimbal, the internal stabilizer will actually fight against the gimbal and make your image start to warp. So the best thing to do is just completely turn that off and rely on your gimbal for the stabilization. And finally, we would suggest shooting in a flat picture profile. Most apps will give you the option of shooting in a standard profile, a neutral profile, and then a log profile with the image being super flat. Now, since your smartphone only can shoot an 8-bit, there's only so much you can do with the colors in your camera. With the test that we've done, we have found that standard adds too much contrast while the log is a little too flat and you start to lose detail. 
we would recommend shooting in the middle with a neutral picture profile. This will give you plenty of room to work with in post while also not being too flat that you start to lose information. When you're ready to shoot, you're gonna wanna treat it exactly like any other digital camera. We try to keep our ISO as low as possible to reduce the amount of noise in our image. For white balance, you would want to set it manually and again, lock it so that it doesn't change. You can either just eyeball it or use the Kelvin temperature to determine exactly what number you should be shooting at. And since we're unable to change our depth of field on smartphones, the only thing you can really change is the shutter speed. As always, you can crank up your shutter speed if needed to bring down the exposure, but it will also affect the motion blur and make the image a little jittery. If you still need to darken the image, we would recommend getting an ND filter for your phone. We prefer the ND filters from Moment lenses and they work fantastic for what we need. Of course, if you're taking your phone and doing some quick run and gun shooting, just crank up the shutter speed to get the correct exposure. After that, set your focus on what is needed to be in focus and lock it. Of course, if the subject is moving, you can set your focus to auto and the phone actually does a pretty good job with staying in focus, but this is what you are looking for manually setting and locking your exposure and also manually setting and locking your focus. And finally, step number eight and what I believe is a complete game changer and that is third party gear. With smartphone video becoming more and more popular and with the technology growing, we now have tons of third party gear that you can purchase to really bring up the cinematic quality of your video. One thing we would highly suggest purchasing would be lenses for your phone. And we aren't talking about cheap clip-on lenses that you can buy on Amazon for 10 or 15 bucks, but professional lenses made specifically for your phone. The number one brand we recommend would be Moment Lenses. They are somewhat expensive at a little over 100 bucks, but what these allow you to do is to get different focal lengths, but still use the highest quality lens on your phone. Like we talked about before, your main 26 millimeter lens is going to be the highest quality. So it allows you to put a telephoto lens on the highest quality glass on your camera. They have a macro lens, which allows you to get super close detail and even an anamorphic lens, which is just really cool and gives you that cinematic look. If you want any sort of different focal length, don't use the lenses that come built into your phone, but get lenses to put over your highest quality camera. Beast Grip also makes a depth of field adapter which allows you to put a DSLR lens on your cell phone. This of course has both pros and cons, but it will allow you to have a really nice depth of field at the expense of some quality loss and edge sharpening. Some of the close-up detail shots in the opening montage were actually filmed with that depth of field adapter, but worked out perfect for that style we're going for. I wouldn't use it to film an entire project, but to add depth of field is a huge advantage. We have all the links to these in the description below and a link to our cinematic smartphone kit that has all the third-party gear that we recommend. By taking these eight steps, we were able to take an iPhone and seamlessly cut the footage together with a $30,000 RED camera to create our opening montage, all by applying these eight steps to our smartphone to get the most cinematic look from what we have in our pocket. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this episode and feel more confident in getting cinematic footage with your smartphone. If you'd like to learn even more about mobile filmmaking, we have a 100 plus episode mobile filmmaking cinema course on everything you need to get cinematic footage with your smartphone. You can check that out over at tomorrowsfilmmakers.com where we have over a thousand training videos and a hundred hours of content on every single filmmaking subject that you can imagine. If you want to go into the production side with weddings, real estate, music videos, commercials, we teach all about that. And if you want to go more into the narrative side with directing, storyboarding, acting, we teach all of that as well. If you'd like to join over 10,000 other filmmakers just like you pursuing their dream to learn all about film, click the link below and sign up for our full academy for 90% off. Our award-winning $800 online film course for a limited time is only $97. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. Click the link in the description and head on over to tomorrowsfilmmakers.com to learn all the skills that you need to succeed.